In this modeling module, we're going to take the data frame that you created in the wrangling module and learn about intelligent ways to store and organize that data so that you can interrogate it with statistical models. The emphasis is not on the statistics themselves, and so we deliberately keep the statistical models relatively simple, although you can apply much more complex models using the same framework. Before we perform statistical modeling, it's often useful to get to know our data set a little bit better, particularly the distribution of variables and the potential correlation between pairs of variables. We illustrate this here using R's built-in data frame on cars. We're using the library Magrit R so that we can pipe, and we're using another library, ggalley, so that we can make use of the function ggpairs. Here, within the cars data frame, we select the columns speed and distance and look at the distribution of those variables on the main diagonal and also the correlation visually and numerically between those variables on the off diagonal. As we learned in the previous module, we can also create new variables and inspect those as well. In this case, we've created a log 10 transformation of the variable speed. For very large data frames, it's sometimes useful to subsample. We can even do that in a way that's reproducible, which we'll see from this small example. Here I create a tibble data frame called X that just contains 10 numbers drawn from the standard normal distribution. Using this data frame X, we can use the function sample underscore n, which is part of the dplyr package, in order to sample a given number of rows from the data frame. Here we're using five. However, if we run that same instruction again, we notice that we've now drawn five different numbers than we did previously. The issue lies in the fact that R uses a random number generator so that it draws a different five numbers each time. If we want our random sample to be reproducible, we need to use R's base function set.seed to which we supply an argument which is a unique integer code. Here we're using the simple number 123. We see now that in two different calls to the function sample n, we draw the same five random numbers from the original list of 10. As a reminder, the emphasis of this module is about good practices for storing and manipulating your data so that you can perform statistical modeling, rather than the emphasis being on the modeling itself. For that reason, we're going to use simple models, primarily linear models and correlation coefficients. To illustrate, first of all, we look again at the cars data frame, which is part of R, and we see that speed and distance may be related to each other in a linear fashion, which we plot using ggplot. To run a linear model in R, we use the function lm. In this example, we're relating the variables speed and distance from the cars data frame. A summary of this model tells us, among other things, that the slope of the line relating those two variables is approximately 0.16, and the p-value is very small, meaning there is a statistically significant relationship between these two variables. Additionally, we can perform a Spearman correlation test between speed and distance. In this case, we see again the p-value is very small, and the correlation coefficient is approximately 0.83. In order to understand how we're storing the data in this example, we're going to make use of the concept of lists. In R, this is a way of organizing together data that is not necessarily of the same type. In this example, I create a list called Y in which I put three items, the first is the number 3.14, the second is the word eggs, 
and the third is a linear model that relates the speed and distance of different cars. Putting all of this together, you're going to work with the data frame that you created in the previous wrangling module. You're going to use those data in order to create statistical models, and importantly, you're going to learn some good techniques for storing the information relating to those statistical models with the data itself. We're going to learn how to group and nest data to perform analyses, and we're going to unnest the data so that we can better visualize it. We'd now like you to open up the RMD file that's associated with this module and begin working 